and that's got to be expensive hasn't it digging tunnels like that um the uh the swiss have all got bunkers underneath the houses though they're always all right they're always ready aren't they mm. the russians have got the russians have got underground bases to stash people haven't they they've got for, for, for the public that that's is right. it's certainly going to scare the elite into going into a bunker isn't it fema trains to the camps with restraining devices supposedly it's when this happens um there's going to be more to come so when this thing comes by it's going to come by again so this is where it gets uh really annoying it's supposed to come back in five months and do it again is that they're monitoring all these objects right down the size of pencil lead and we have trillions of dollars of hardware up there to stop these nearest objects from striking the earth or, or changing their their orbital pathway by pushing them away and that project is far more advanced than what people think our u.s space command uh, is very very advanced and all of these objects are being pushed up and you get a brief field. Let's say that this is, you know, think of it as a teardrop and there's a plume around it of particles and dust and other things. And this is coming in at, say, 35 to 40,000 miles an hour. Let's say some of those particles that are coming along with that large chunk of 3,000 meters is actually, let's say, 10 meters, 20 meters, size of a refrigerator, size of a bus. And it's kind of traveling along with it before and after, and there's a tail of this thing, right? Uh, it's likely that part of that tail or part of that corona around it is going to pass not 5,000 miles, but maybe 200 miles or 300 miles. If it starts getting trapped in the atmosphere, the atmosphere pulls it down, and then it explodes, and you get a plasma explosion in the upper atmosphere at hundreds of thousands of degrees. That plasma explosion was happening at Tunguska because it came in such an, an, an obtuse angle uh, that when it came into the Earth, it actually exploded high above the, the uh, area of Siberia, causing that explosion that, that literally it flattened hundreds of thousands of square miles of forest. But at this particular time, it's going to just swing back, unless we hit a tail, or unless unless there's something following it. Oh yeah, this is this is like a comet tail. You know those you know those wing bits coming off the side of it. Those are millions of miles long. Yeah, well, exactly. This is this is our biggest problem. Um, so we've we've got all this going on, and got all the climate change, of course, because uh, you know they they were very quick, weren't they, to say climate change is our fault. Well, right. Wouldn't it make you feel a little bit strange if I said that climate change isn't just on Earth, it's happening through the whole solar system? Oh, and they've already stated, this is the US government, that within four years they expect a massive evacuation of Tokyo because of a super earthquake. It's coming into the solar system, and this thing's like a heater. Now, look at what's happened to Venus. We've, we've, got, we've got a couple of decades here, and a two and a half thousand percent increase in green light coming off Venus. Isn't it coming off it? That's enormous. Right. And then look, rapid appearance of clouds on mars yeah and ozone appearing on mars but we've got a couple of decades here so mars well, has got global well, yeah. warming. why would it say there's global warming on venus you know they're gonna they're gonna tax you for venus's global warming <laughs> yeah you're right they couldn't that they screws couldn't, it doesn't it they, one of the weapons that america had that was called the plasma death weapon that, that nikola tesla developed and his plans were later on actually deployed and america has these weapons they can create 100 million 100 megaton explosion over every city or town anywhere in the world in a matter of minutes by plasma interferometry in the upper atmosphere. And what that means is they can create a plasma of hundreds of millions of degrees over an area that can cause an explosion of the upper atmosphere. If you superheat the upper atmosphere to 100 million degrees, you have an explosion because what happens with a nuclear bomb is it's not the bomb that causes the explosion, it's the superheating of the air by x-rays. The x-rays superheat the air to hundreds of millions of degrees in picoseconds and that's what causes the explosion. It's superheating air. So they can do that without a bomb. Now this can happen naturally and what you're saying is when these objects are coming in they not only discharge plasma uh, but they can cause a plasma type explosion that can create the Carolina Bays all over the planet and the evidence isn't just an impact but a plasma explosion occurring in the upper atmosphere. Yes, I, I think that could happen. You'd, you'd, you'd be having hundreds of thousands of ear shattering, radiation spewing, nuclear blasts exploding around the globe. Is The climate change is starting to really pick up a pace now. We know that under oceanic volcanism, and you have one of the first reports you have here is that the scientists shoot holes in the NASA Greenland hysteria. Uh, we have the craziest climate going on down in, in Australia that they've ever seen. And they're trying to tell them that if they reduce carbon footprint that they're going to save the planet, which is a total lie. They're closing down coal plant, plants, they're losing jobs, they're actually increasing the cost of food and energy and everything. And this is a model that you don't want to do when you're approaching an ice age and you're approaching climate shift and major crop failures around the world because of all the climatic and geo, uh, uh, the geological changes that are occurring and the atmospheric changes that are occurring because we're moving to a different area of space, an area of space where volcanism, extreme weather, and now of course we have the death of the loop current, all these combined means we're going to have major famines, uh, major increased levels of high energy ultraviolet radiation. Uh, that's why we're seeing record levels this summer, 11, 12, 13. 
uh, you know, craziness, but we're moving into an ice age, and the Gakkel Range, we've talked about this before, and you're the, one of the first to notice it, is a volcanic mountain range longer and higher than the, Al the Swiss Alps in the Arctic Ocean underneath the, the ice shelf in the Arctic. So when they're saying, yeah. so let's talk about this, because this scientist thing, shooting holes, is really important. What you're looking at there, I can, I can take that. Um, you can't hide it. I mean, if, if you're if you're going on about Jupiter and what's going on with uh, Jupiter's uh, white ovals, um, look at them changing. I mean, J Jupiter's got remember that great big spot on Jupiter. There's there's a lot of a lot of really weird stuff going on. Saying Jupiter has gone up um, 18 degrees in 10 years. I mean, what would what would happen if that happened to us on Earth? 18 degrees in 10 years? That would be a problem. Yeah. I mean, that would that would be the end. Well, yes, because uh, NASA, you know, you, you're talking about what's going on in Australia, but look at the United States. NASA, at least part of it, is trying to, to really hype this global warming thing to, to beat the band. They came out with an article this week saying that that something like 97% of the ice on, on Greenland had melted last week. Um, uh, and that they, they found this by, by satellite measurement. They said it was unprecedented. Absolutely right. Um, so that that's a bit of a problem. Look at that from 1996 to 2002. It's it's 40 percent brighter. That's not yeah, that many years now, is it? That thing's closer to what's coming in, and they're getting a lot of changes because they're nearer to. Well, you know when uh, UV hits a glass window, it it turns into infrared. In other words, the uh, the frequency changes. Well, during the last flare, which came from AR 1540 off the sun, and that was around January 12th. Um, it was noted that after the fact, I mean, we weren't told ahead of time, we weren't told to get indoors, but it was stated after the fact that the, there was a very strong, um, tremendously strong UV strobing of the Earth. In other words, the UV from the sun was so intense that it got down to the surface of the Earth and it strobed it, so it was like intermittent. And um, so when it, I think what happened was that when it got to Greenland, you know, that ice is, when it's solid, when the UV gets to it, it's like going through glass, it turns into infrared, and I think that's what melted it. And then when the strobing stopped, the ice remelt, uh, refroze. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. Because they have no other explanation for what happened there. In four days, you know, the entire ice sheet melted. Probably during the summer yeah. months, it'll go up to, a, at the most, 55% of the top of the ice sheet will melt. In this case, it went from 37% to 97%, right. melted in four days. Right. So this was a very, very unusual event, and it happened at the same time that the UV from the sun uh, strobed the Earth. There's a map. Look at that one. Oh, this is this They're is. All yeah, this is everywhere. Look at it. And it's all over the world. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's there's a lot of underground bases now everywhere, aren't there? Yes, there are. Volcanoes going off. We're going to have. Um, there we go. Economic losses. So <laughs> I suppose someone could dig out the insurance files, couldn't they, and find out how many people have have lost due to uh, natural disaster or whatever. We've got horrible things happening all around the world, but I don't believe there's anything you can do to prepare for it. I don't think any normal person could really do very. Because did you know the government moved off the east coast? Absolutely, they moved everything. Uh, CIA headquarters, FBI. They're all they're all located in Colorado. Mm. Probably underground in Colorado. Well, yeah, definitely, because they've got a they've got an underground military base right under the airport, haven't they? They sure do. There's a thing out there, and you've read it in Life magazine. You've seen the front cover of the NASA SETI program. I mean, you've seen the the, the big uh, you know, the, uh, the picture from outer space, and uh, you've talk, they've talked about a hundred million dollar investment, hundred million dollars to invest to find out whether there is extraterrestrial intelligence. Well, there's, there's, they got something going here. You remember War of the Worlds, the radio broadcast? Yes, by Orson Welles, 1939. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we've got something else coming in. They're going to make the announcement that they have discovered extraterrestrial intelligence. And this will frighten the people of the world. Say, oh, my God, how can we deal with this as a nation? But we can only deal with it you know, as the United Nations. Yes, we're going to have a United Nations, a one-world government. Yeah, it's necessary, they're going to say. It's absolutely necessary. Why? Tell me, to, to defend ourselves from those little green men, from the aliens that are out there. They will make that announcement. And the whole program is phony. It's fixed. It's set up. And you're going to be the patsy unless you understand what's going down and who's doing what to whom. And, if you, and um, we're running out of time as a nation. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, this is this is certainly a tall order. I mean, I used to think that uh, Campus Crusades Jesus 2000 was a bit far-fetched to win the world to Christ, and now I'm hearing all this. this is well, they want to win the world for Satan. Yeah. They want a Luciferian 2000 program in their initiative. Talk, we're talking right. about the Illuminati. I was concerned when they sent up the Galileo mission, because they sent up the Galileo mission to explore the planet Jupiter, going to circle the planet, mm -hmm. and then by 1999 it's going to be drawn into the planet where it will simply explode. What does it have on it? It's got 49 and a, and a, and a quarter pounds of plutonium, enough for, well, let's say, 10 hydrogen bombs. What is the atmosphere of Jupiter made up of? Hydrogen. Now. This, if it, were to be, if it were to be ignited, would give us a second sun. Right. And I thought, my God, a second sun. I said, where have I read that before? Something struck me. I said, wait a minute, Arthur C. Clarke, 2010, okay. Odyssey 2. Went back to the last uh, chapter. Guess what the last chapter is this chapter's called? Lucifer Rising. And he talks about the ignition of the planet Jupiter by the year 2010. And... Uh, he said in the, at, the, at the very end of the book, and you can read it, go to the library, pick it up, look at it. He said that the NASA space program was interested, uh, Dr. Robert uh, Jethro, I think it was, or Jethro, was interested in this particular thesis for the Galileo mission. So we're talking about a space exploration program that not only is going to go, it went up. That was in 1982. This was sent up five years later. If that thing ignites, it would give us a dual solar system. So what we're talking about is And they would rename the planet from Jupiter to Lucifer. Right. And that's exactly what Arthur C. Clarke talks about in well, 2010. You know, so we're talking about Lucifer 2000. There'll be no more nighttime, so there'll be no more opportunity for crime at night. There will be more sun now because you have two suns now in, the, in our uh, solar system. In the increase so of the growing increase, system, growing like the Matanuska Valley north of uh, uh, Anchorage. And this may sound Alaska. pretty far-fetched, but you had better uh, look at the facts. The fact is that this thing is carrying plutonium. It's going to Jupiter, and they know what it's going to do when it does when it does crash. So and this NASA SETI program could <clears> be used as a vehicle to frighten the people of the planet into surrendering their sovereignty and to accepting a one-world government. And we've, we're talking about a thing, uh, a group out here called the Federal Emergency Management Association, right. which came in mass when the riots took place. They create chaos, it's and they control. create control. Over the world headquarters in, in, in Switzerland, of the world uh, Masonic headquarters for world Freemasonry, over the door is Ordo Ab Chao, which is Latin for order out of chaos. And all Freemasons know that term, Ordo Ab Chao. Order out of chaos. The concept is to create chaos create the problems, then while the people are frightened to death of all the crime <clears throat> and everything that seems to be out of control, a riot, the situation, the government then moves in with justification. In order to put down this terrible chaos, they must have full power of the military, full obedience of the people to give the government full power to do whatever they want. I'm not looking to any of this. I, my, my belief is, is that uh, knowledge is the is the thing that's needed. People need to wake up and discover who is running their government, what the symbols of government mean, what these emblems mean. When they see the national coat of arms, the the the, the flags, the emblems, the seals, the symbols, all of these things mean something. Educate yourself. Find out where it came from. That's the only hope I see for the human race is the human race itself waking up to find out we've been had. In Tasmania, which is 2,000 k's away from that. Can you see that? See that? Now, how can you get three exactly the same 2,000 miles apart? on three different cameras that are miles, thousands of miles apart in Australia. Okay? And look down here. Watch this one.
us seek. That's got to be expensive, hasn't it, digging tunnels like that? Um, the uh, the Swiss have all got bunkers underneath the houses, though. They're always all right. They're always ready, aren't they? Mm. The Russians have got Russians have got underground bases to stash people, haven't they? They've got, for, for, for the public, that is. Right. It's certainly going to scare the elite into going into a bunker, isn't it? FEMA trains to the camps with restraining devices, supposedly. It's when this happens, um, there's going to be more to come. So um, when this thing comes by, it's going to come by again. So this is where it gets uh, really annoying. It's supposed to come back in five months and do it again. Is that they're monitoring all these objects right down the size of pencil lead. And we have trillions of dollars of hardware up there to stop these nearest objects from striking the Earth or, or changing their, their orbital pathway by pushing them away. And that project is far more advanced than what people think. Our U.S. Space Command uh, is very, very advanced, and all of these objects are being pushed up. And you get a debris field. Let's say that this is, you know, think of it as a teardrop, and there's a plume around it of particles and dust and other things. And this is coming in at, say, 35 to 40,000 miles an hour. Let's say some of those particles that are coming along with that large chunk of 3,000 meters is actually, let's say, 10 meters, 20 meters, size of a refrigerator, size of a bus. And it's kind of traveling along with it before and after, and there's a tail of this thing, right? Uh, it's likely that part of that tail or part of that corona around it is going to pass not 5,000 miles, but maybe 200 miles or 300 miles. If it starts getting trapped in the atmosphere, the atmosphere pulls it down, and then it explodes, and you get a plasma explosion in the upper atmosphere at hundreds of thousands of degrees. That plasma explosion was happening at Tunguska because it came in such an, an, an obtuse angle uh, that when it came into the Earth, it actually exploded high above the, the uh, area of Siberia, causing that explosion to, to literally it flattened hundreds of thousands of square miles of forest. But this particular time, it's going to just swing back, unless we hit a tail, or unless unless there's something following it. Oh yeah, this is this is like a comet tail. You know those you know those wing bits coming off the side of it. Those are millions of miles long. Yeah, well, exactly. This is this is our biggest problem. Um, so we've we've got all this going on, and got all the climate change, of course, because uh, you know they they were very quick, weren't they, to say 